Eclogue One. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Meliboeus, recorded by Dennis Sayers. Tityrus, recorded by Kara Schallenberg. www.kray.org. San Diego, California. The Eclogues by Virgil. Eclogue One. You, Tityrus, neath a broad beech canopy reclining, on the slender oat rehearse your sylvan ditties. I from my sweet fields and home's familiar bounds even now depart. Exiled from home am I, while you, Tityrus, you sit careless in the shade, and at your call, fair Amaryllis. Bid the woods resound. O oh, Meliboeus, t'was a god vouchsafed this ease to us, For him a god will I deem ever, And from my folds a tender lamb, Oft with its life-blood, shall his altar stain. His gift it is that, as your eyes may see, My kind may roam at large, And I myself play on my shepherd's pipe What songs I will. I grudge you not the boon, but marvel more such wide confusion fills the countryside. See, sick at heart I drive my she-goats on, for this one, O oh my Tityrus, scarce can lead. For mid the hazel thicket here but now she dropped her new yeaned twins on the bare flint. Hope of the flock! An ill, I mind me well, which many a time, but for my blinded sense, The thunder-stricken oak foretold, Oft to from hollow trunk the raven's ominous cry. But who this god of yours? Come, to Tyrus, tell. The city, Meliboeus, they call Rome. I, simpleton, deemed like this town of ours, Whereto we shepherds oft are wont to drive the younglings of the flock. So, too, I knew whelps to resemble dogs, and kids their dams, Comparing small with great, but this as far above all other cities rears her head, As Cyprus above pliant Osir towers. And what so potent cause took you to Rome? Freedom, which, though belated, cast at length her eyes upon the sluggard, when my beard gan whiter fall beneath the barber's blade cast eyes, I say, and though long tarrying, came. Now when from Galatea's yoke released I serve but Amaryllis, for I will own while Galatea reigned over me, I had no hope of freedom, and no thought to save. Though many a victim from my folds went forth, or rich cheese pressed for the unthankful town, Never with laden hands returned I home. I used to wonder, Amaryllis, why you cried to heaven so sadly, and for whom you left the apples hanging on the trees. T'was Tityrus was away. Why, Tityrus, the very pines, the very water-springs, the very vineyards cried aloud for you. What could I do? How else from bonds be freed? or otherwhere find gods so nigh to aid. There, Meliboeus, I saw that youth to whom yearly, for twice six days, my altars smoke. There instant answer gave he to my suit. Feed as before your kind, boys, rear your bulls. So in old age, you happy man, your fields will still be yours, and ample for your need. Though with bare stones overspread, The pastures all be choked with rushy mire, Your ewes with young by no strange fodder Will be tried, nor hurt, Through taint contagious of a neighboring flock. Happy old man, Who mid familiar streams and hallowed springs Will court the cooling shade. Here, as of old, your neighbor's bordering hedge, that feasts with willow-flower the hybla bees, shall oft with gentle murmur lull to sleep, while the leaf-dresser beneath some tall rock uplifts his song. 
nor cease their cooings hoarse, the wood-pigeons which are your heart's delight, nor doves their moaning in the elm-tree top. Sooner shall light stags therefore feed in air, the seas their fish leave naked on the strand, Germans and Parthians shift their natural bounds, and these the Arar, those the Tigris drink, then from my heart his face and memory fade. But we far hence to burning Libya, some, some to the Scythian steppes, or thy swift flood, Cretan Oxes, now must wend our way, or Britain, from the whole world sundered far. Ah, shall I ever in after time behold my native bounds, see many a harvest hence with ravished eyes the lowly turf-roofed cot where I was king? These fallows trimmed so fair, some brutal soldier will possess these fields and alien master. Ah, to what a pass has civil discord brought our hapless folk, for such as these, then, were our furrows sown. Now, Meliboeus, graft your pears, now set your vines in order. Go, once happy flock, my she-goats, go. Never again shall I, stretched in green cave, behold you from afar, hang from the bushy rock. My songs are sung. Never again will you, with me to tend, on clover flower, or bitter willows, browse. Yet here, this night, you might repose with me, on green leaves pillowed, apples ripe have I, soft chestnuts, and of curdled milk enow, and see, the farm-roof chimneys smoke afar, and from the hills, the shadows lengthening, fall. End of Eclogue 1